and the tares are growing at the same time. Didn't Jesus use a practical story about that? And he said, the tares, T-A-R-E-S. What, what would they be called? Weeds. The weeds and the wheat are growing the same time in the field. We have um, three tomato plants at home. I'm, I have to admit, I'm really proud of them. We bought them for 75 cents off of somebody, and we made a spot next to the house, outside of course, and we build it up and then we, we put some wire containers there so they could grow through them, and there are the tomatoes. Do you know what? Sometimes there are weeds that grow there. Sometimes we can pull them out, but some, if they get too close to the vine, we let them go because they both grow. And um, when we think about the United States, the East Coast and the West Coast. Think about the East Coast. Wouldn't um, Phil, uh, Pennsylvania be in the East? Out by New York in that area? There, it said in one place in Philadelphia across the river, it said that that place, in fact, is the least desirable area in the United States to live. I thought it was Detroit, Michigan. Detroit, Michigan used to be called the murder capital of the, of the United States. There were more murders in, in Detroit. But I've read where one time anyway, in one part of Philadelphia, is the least desirable place to live. Boy, I feel better. I hope Indianapolis is better. <laughs> or Champaign-Urbana. But then you go out west to the Portland, Oregon. I understand that of the people who live in the area of Portland, Oregon, only 22% have any kind of religion. I'm talking about all kinds of religion. False and the one true kind, Christianity. But only 6 or 7% of the people are in a church building like you and me today. Now, I'm not bragging about that. Us, but only six or seven percent come to a sanctuary like this one in Portland, Oregon. Well, oh, how we need to reflect more. Look at the words again in verses 13 and 14, 1 Corinthians 16. Be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be men or people of courage, be strong, do everything in love. And yes, uh, we want to say this too. We need to be revived. Now, you have on your out and your outline there, I believe, Seven Steps to Revival by Dr. George Sweeting. Now, I, you may know this. Dr. George Sweeting used to be president of Moody Bible Institute. That's where Pastor Park went. That's where Mrs. Park helped get him through school. <laughs> All right? Sure. Okay. But he's a wonderful, he was a godly man. But he, he, he listed these seven steps to revival, about reflecting, about getting renewed. And here they are. Be dissatisfied with the government. He didn't say that. He said yourself. Yourself. Me. You. Be dissatisfied with you. Yourself. Um, we all have room for improvement, don't we? Sure we do. Because I can look at my neighbors and say, oh, they shouldn't do this. They shouldn't put their car this place. They shouldn't do this to their house. They shouldn't do... What about me? <laughs> you know, it's not about them. It's about me. He said, be dissatisfied with yourself. Now, number two, do a thorough job of eating ice cream. No. Oh, I like to eat ice cream, by the way. So does our son-in-law. Boy, he really likes ice cream. <laughs> I don't blame him. Be, do a thorough job of repenting. R-E-P-E-N-T-I-N-G. Repenting. Do a thorough job of repenting. 
Well, that would mean just to tell God I'm sorry for my sins is not repenting. That's not repenting. I could be, is being sorry for my sin is wrong, is right, but I need to go further. Besides being sorry, I need to ask him, God, please forgive me for my sin. But to go further, and then not to go back to that sin. Keep going for Jesus, repenting. Number three, Dr. Sweeting. Ask God to transform your... Boss, yes, that's good. But first of all, your life. Your life. L-I-F-E. It's good to get your boss converted and transformed, but yourself first, myself. Um, number four. Is it number four time? Okay. Put yourself in a place where God can use... Your neighbor? You. Y O U. You. Or if you're if you're tweeting or, or trittering, just put a U. <laughs> right? Okay. Number five. Make restitution whenever possible. When it's possible. Jane, one of Jane's brothers, her father was a mechanic, had his own garage. People brought their, garage, their, their cars, trucks, tractors, he worked on them to fix them. Her younger brother, Don, he took over the business when her father retired. I can remember Don telling me one time, I see one man walk down the street or he comes to our Sunday school. He's never paid me for a transmission in my labor. Cost five or six hundred dollars. Man never paid him. Never paid him. Now Don didn't get mad, but the man should have paid him. I should pay my debts. If I owe something, I should pay them. Or go talk to the people and work out a plan how hopefully I can pay them. Right? Make restitution whenever. If I have cheated somebody out of $10, then I should go give them the $10 and apologize and ask them to forgive me, if possible. Number six, develop a seriousness of purpose. P-U-R-P-O-S-E. P-U-R-P-O-S-E. De develop a seriousness of purpose. Number seven, deliberately, deliberately narrow, not widen, but narrow your interests. What you're interested in, I-N-T-E-R-E-S-T-S, I-N-T-E-R-E-S-T-S, -E -E your interest. Now, these people that were 95 years of age and older, they said one thing we would do is reflect more, we would think more. Think about the real meaning of what life is about. And Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. Let me read these words that Paul said. Just listen to these words. Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. Listen to these. I, Paul said, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings becoming like him in his death. When I reflect, I want, Paul said, I want to become more like Jesus. And I believe that's one of our hymns or songs in our hymn book, in our song book. More like the master I would ever be. Okay, number two on your outline. They would, these people, 95 years of age and older, they would risk, R-I-S-K, R-I-S-K, more. They would risk more. Well, somebody said they've dreamed their dreams. You know, you dream and you think, well, I want to be this and I want to do that and I want to go over here. And one time I thought, you know, it'd be nice if we had some place to live in all four directions of the United States. The only problem is it takes a little money. <laughs> 
and that never came to be. That's okay. But I was dreaming about that. Well, I think about many who have said, someday I'd like to go on a missions trip. Hmm. Or they said, honey, husband talking to the wife, or the wife talking to the husband, honey, sweetheart, sugar baby, whatever he said, you know, the nice things. Not, not the bad things, the nice things. Honey, these people really need our help. But we never got around to doing anything. Ooh. Maybe you could volunteer at one of the days. Is it the empty tomb in Urbana or Champaign? Which city? Champaign. Empty tomb. Because two young ladies came who go to Iowa State University now and they said they used to work at the empty tomb. I remember them saying that sometime this year when they came with us. Maybe we could write a letter or a number of letters or 25 letters to prisoners or to military. Now you have to be very careful. I would caution you. You have to be very careful if you write to somebody who's in prison. That's nothing against them. But they didn't get there because, usually because they were nice people. You have to be very careful. Now, maybe a different family or individual, you know, um, it, maybe you'd have them to your home once a week. Maybe Jane and I need to have a different family from the neighborhood and invite them to our home one time a week. That couple over there, maybe these couple over here with this children, or this single lady over here, or the gentleman. How God tells us, and we risk, it's risk, it's not easy. Because sometimes they say, no, I don't want to do it. Um, child watching, maybe three hours a week for a busy, busy mother, they would risk more. Well, the scripture says, be on your guard, doesn't it? Be alert, be strong, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, do everything in love. But in verse 9 of 1 Corinthians 16, it says, a door has opened. God opens the door, and maybe he wants you to help your neighbor, or neighbors, or us. Now, I wonder how many words you know. One time I had a professor in college, and he helped write all the pages and the words on those pages for one of the letters of the alphabet. Oh, it made my head hurt. It was Dr. Kellogg, like Kellogg's cornflakes. He didn't have anything to do with cornflakes. Don't, don't go there. But Kellogg, and everything with K, he helped write at least one or two or three or four pages in the collegiate dictionary words that start with K. Wow. Well, have you ever thought about it? Um, some people count words. Have you ever taken French in, in school? French? I knew one fellow, I haven't either, I knew one fellow was going to take French and his dad said no. You're going to take Spanish. Why? Well, the father knew that the only reason he was taking French is because his girl friend was going to take French too. <laughs> that wasn't going to do him any good if she didn't do so well either. <laughs> well, there's an academy in Paris that keeps a close count of French words. How many French words do you think there are? 10,000? 20,000? 30,000, 50,000, no, there are over, I understand, I've read where there are over 90,000 French words. 90,000. Well, now, wait a minute, that's a lot to learn. <clears throat> you know, you could take French the rest of your life and never learn 90,000 words in French, couldn't you? That would be me. Well, German. I had to take German in college. My advisor said, you take German. You have to have a foreign language. Now, what I, with a number of, I should have taken Korean. Amen. Amen. That's right. I should have taken Korean. 